I really appreciate the chance to be here. Our partner, MVD Energy, is probably the most fast-moving partner we could have, and it's a, it's a real pleasure to be working with them. They're pragmatic, and um, I think they, they, they're willing to think outside the box, which is critical. Okay, so I'm going to go quickly through a little case study here. Um, obviously, you've seen this uh, picture before. This is um, actually a rendering of what uh, MBD had intended to build at Lo Yang uh, Power Station. And um, as you'll see tomorrow, the, the designs have, have greatly evolved uh, from that. Um, and, uh, but the same basic concept exists of, of uh, algae tube modules serviced by um, intermediate control centers and what you wouldn't see here, but there's sort of a central uh, downstream area as well. The calculus is that, um, you know, algae can be a very efficient uptake for waste uh, emissions. Um, and in fact, the, the, the more waste emissions, the better, apparently. There's a lot of debate about, uh, you know, CO2 and, and land area and so forth. But I do believe that there is a benefit in greenhouse gas uh, administration for even burning algae-based fuels because you do displace the equivalent amount of fossil fuels in the process. So you, you displace the fossil fuel cycle, and that's beneficial. Um, obviously, if you were to take your algae and bury it, it would be the, uh, the ultimate, but not very useful. This is a slide from MBD Energy showing a little bit of their progression. JCU research is, is done. The next big step is the one hectare d demonstration site and moving on up from there. It is a, it is a high acreage activity um, based on their CO2 ambitions. Just quickly, we, we furnished uh, two main technologies to uh, MBD Energy. The first one uh, was in fact our very first technology we launched with in 2007 based on my brother Nicholas's um, 15 years of work in wastewater aeration and uh, uh, a lot of installations in Japan uh, in, in, in wastewater area. Uh, and then we, of course, um, furnished a growing series of uh, single-step extraction systems, and that is our current focus. We have a well-known business development process in, in the origin all called business prevention, and uh, MBD was the victim of that for many months, and finally, uh, Larry Sermons flew out to LA, broke down our door and said, uh, we have to talk, and uh, that was very good for us. So um, th the basic uh, concept was that even though we weren't ready, we were far from being fully productized, uh, MBD Energy was willing to work with us on that basis, and that was uh, a boon for us. And so, you know, you can see the various um, uh, stages we've been through, and the most recent thing we announced last week was a very constructive improvement in the configuration of the Tarong uh, setup. Okay, where are we going from here? A number of producers, including Aurora, which is now building at uh, Karatha, um, are in what I would call industrial demonstration. It, for me, it's a stage that if we successfully accomplish it, then we'll have hit an inf inflection point in uh, the algae industry so that the you know, various estimates for, you know, 17% compound average growth, I think will be transformed into a more of a hockey stick graph. So, um, because if you have a functioning one plus hectare setup that's constructively using waste and generating product, then you've really proven the, the entire concept to the world. And I think it's going to attract a lot of, of investment. Okay, so obviously, Taking up CO2 is a major challenge, et cetera. Managing these healthy fields, these algae fields, in a way that they'll actually um, succeed on a consistent basis, you need to get that daily harvest, quote unquote. Uh, so you have to industrialize, in a way, what is really an agricultural product. Process management, and we recently um, uh, invested in a, uh, a SCADA, Supervisory Control and Data, data Acquisition System, um, that I'll talk about a little bit later to help manage that in real time. For one hectare, we, we actually 300 GPM is somewhat overbuilt um, to allow for peak processes, but um, the key is you can't have batch processing in a, in a high scale algae operation. Where does the stuff go? Obviously offtake. And finally, um, you know, these projects start. 
and then they go on and on and on and on. Um, and I think that um, you know, MBD has to manage this, the perception that people have of, well, now you're funded to do it, and surely it will be available by Thanksgiving or Christmas. <laughs> so um, it takes months to build the brick and mortar, and that's just how it is. But it will result in this inflection point, I believe. Very early on, uh, MBD got tired of specking multiple vendors, and uh, the message in no uncertain terms was, uh, you know, you may be a technology supplier, but please integrate with the process chain. And uh, we've, we've worked hard to do that. Um, for example, our real-time control network uses the um, very uh, popular Opto 22 sensor system and um, also some controls from another well-established company. And then in areas like dissolved air flotation, three-phase separation, and eventually uh, fractionation, we are eager to make vendor tie-ups. We believe that the market is looking for non-chemical approaches, and um, I think there is a place for chemical fractionation, but in the main, it's, it's an advantage if you're chemical-free, you've got to be scalable, and you, above all, you have to be low energy. We believe we've achieved a very, very low energy footprint indeed. We believe that we can get below $10 OPEX per ton of biomass output, which is, I think, very good. Now, when you integrate with vendors, you also get an opportunity to cross-sell between the vendors, and I think that's, that's going to be a real opportunity. We don't want to build a lot of, you know, distribution networks, and I'm sure the vendors would like to leverage what they've already invested in. Again, you know, here, here's an issue right now, and that there's not a lot of customers like MBD in the world. Um, you know, companies that are willing to spend, you know, seven figures on a um, harvest system. And uh, so I, I think that there's a lot of good, promising stuff going on. But on the one hand, you have the legacy uh, players, such as uh, people using heterotrophic. I, I say legacy because they're generally operating at a high uh, OPEX basis, such as Solozyme and MarTech. And they're, you know, it's, it's difficult for them to look at uh, the process of replacing that. And on the other hand, there are the players coming up, and they don't necessarily have the volume. So there's a sweet spot right there where um, a producer is, is sort of shooting up um, into the, this, this plane where they're still in the planning process, but they really are genuinely going to do big stuff. So we're going to see a lot of uh, sort of entry-level um, test sales um, for the next year. And I think it's all to the good. I think we're going to be experimenting our way as an industry to a best of breed platform that, uh, you know, we do well as vendors to not, to not try and own too much of the process chain, but rather to be really focused. And we've learned that lesson. We, we're, we're very tightly focused and best of breed. And ult ultimately, we think that the partnerships between vendors will dictate uh, long-term survival. We found that we were, um, climate of innovation was actually excessive. Um, and uh, not only have we done a good job of putting all our innovation activities into a, a separate skunk works area, as we call it, uh, but also we've really focused our product uh, onto just one key thing, which is the single step extraction. Um, and of course, uh, I'm an old product manager from the high-tech uh, days, and uh, I love the discipline, and we are heavily into the product management phase at this point. Um, you'll be hearing some announcements about the exact uh, form factors, but basically the entry level is a 20 GPM unit, uh, and uh, the modular one is 75 GPM, which can be combined uh, for as much scale as you like. I don't think we're gonna see super massive individual extraction systems because Algae fields themselves have to be broken up for best practices, and so it's easier to hook on the extraction systems to each field. Finally, we believe strongly in evergreen support contracts so that the customer is not stuck with obsolete product. By evergreen, I mean, of course, that it simply gets kept up to date and the customer doesn't have to worry about it. Where we're going is uh, from farming to something a lot like wastewater treatment. I think the wastewater industry understands the, the variables of load balancing and pumping vast amounts of water and dealing with critical events that can, that can endanger the health. 
of the aquatic environment. One thing that we have started to believe, and we're talking uh, closely with the Department of Energy's Idaho National Lab, which is our partner, uh, and our government partner in the U.S., and that is that the industry really needs to have an intermediate feedstock standard. In other words, growers need to know that they're going to make something, and processors need to know they're going to receive something. So that intermediate something has got to be, um, on the one hand, dewatered enough that it can be readily transported, but also capable of being processed readily on the different paths. And so that sort of uh, hinge feedstock, I think, is critical so that people don't bleed into each other's areas. So well, here's, my, here's my thing, you know, take it, and, and then I take it from you, sort of a, the, the baton in a relay race, shall we say. This is something that's, that uh, the DOE thought they would call uniform intermediate feedstock, which I thought was trippingly good branding, and um, we like to call it algae crude. But that's where uh, we think the standard setting needed. There is no standard setting body for this kind of thing uh, on an ISO basis. I think we need to uh, address that as an industry. And you know, I, I think there's opportunities for all the various national uh, bodies like CSIRO to get involved in that process. Um, and this is a picture of that intermediate feedstock uh, taken um, a few months ago, back in April at uh, James Cook University. And it's, it's a, uh, I think it's about a 15% solids uh, slurry with cell compromise. In other words, you might call it oily paste is one way to put it. And that's a good feedstock. And this is how it diagrams out for us. Um, obviously, you've got uh, your growth uh, system, which uh, feeds into the single step extraction through a concentration step and ending up with algae crude. What's great about the algae crude positioning is that it enables a fork, a key fork in our industry between um, a, a fractionation strategy that breaks down into value-add products, including biodiesel and so on, or a bulk processing mode uh, through hydrothermal upgrading, uh, et cetera, uh, fast paralysis, you name it, where there's very little processing. And I think that, that the industry is going to come to a point of, of, re of recognizing that this separation step is, is expensive from a process capex and, and, and energy usage point of view. And at that point, you sort of go down that road. You've also got to remember that you, a lot of this, the outputs at the bottom stage are food grade, and you probably should not be using wastewater or industrial CO2 for your food grade applications. So it almost drives the the logic to say, well, if you're going to use a lot of waste, then a lot of the food grade applications are, are imperiled, shall we say, they're difficult, and it drives you a little bit more towards the bulk approach, and then, of course, doing petroleum fractions as a strategy. Now, less money, for sure, but also much less processing cost, and I think that's a, a calculus we'll need to get into. Fortunately, it's really not our pay grade. We don't have to worry about that. Our job is to present a feedstock that can go either direction. Obviously, we integrate, the, the, the red boxes are all uh, stages that we want to integrate, even if they're not our product. And here you have a picture of our SCADA, which we've built. And the SCADA either inter interacts with the growth uh, PLC, if the, if the grower has one, or we can go ahead and expand into the growth system and provide those sensors. Now, why do we need a SCADA? The, what we've learned is that the age um, type uh, of algae, the the hardness, the salinity of the water, the t temperature, a couple hundred factors are critical to the, the high-speed extraction process. And so right now we have to sort of have a master, master extractor. Um, that's a, sounds like a proctologist. But anyway, <laughs> um, but this master has to sit there and, and, and tweak things. And so we want to get away from that. And so we've built what we codenamed Greenstick as a system that will, will automatically adjust this, and you'll be seeing more developments in that direction as a real-time uh, field system. All right. So again, uh, carbon capture, we believe, is huge. Um, there's a new term floating out there called ca carbon capture and utilization, CCU, which differentiates from storage, and I think uh, it really makes the case that uh, 
we're, we're using the algae for beneficial, uh, the CO2 for beneficial purposes, and that's all to the good. Um, new stage, vendor integration. Uh, we really, really, really believe in simple, low-tech systems, albeit, you know, easy to steal, so that's another concern. But nonetheless, we do think the systems need to be simple in the field. Um, low energy, of course. There will be a shakeout. Um, we all need to focus and standardize, uh, especially at the feedstock level, and um, that's where we're looking really to, to help over the next few months and years define uh, this intermediate feedstock. And as I said before, it is a key industry inflection point. That's it. Thank <laughs> you.